Welcome to this video on Open Educational Resources, a brief exploration. Let's get started. So what is OER? OER consists of content such as articles, books, audio, images, video, software, and digital tools that one is licensed to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. The idea is that you can take all sorts of interesting material out there, book chapters, images, articles, and mix them together as well as edit and augment them as you see fit and then provide those to your students as learning materials. Now all of this is done through what's called Creative Commons licensing or CC licensing. For those not familiar with copyright, when you want to use a copyrighted work, you have to get explicit permission to use that work from the copyright holder. With CC licensing, that idea is flipped on its head and the creator provides this license so that people can freely use the creator's content with some stipulations, but they do not have to ask permission. It's granted from the beginning. Those stipulations are usually clarified in the license to expectations around attribution, resharing of the content you might create with the author's content, clarity around whether you can profit from using the work, and whether you are allowed to alter the work or not. Since 2004, CC licensing has become quite popular with over 1.1 billion licensing created in the first 13 years. You can find material with CC licenses in abundance in places such as Flickr, YouTube, the Internet Archive, the Public Library of Science, and many more. To know if something has a CC license or not, you'll want to look for the CC icon accompanied by any of the limitations on the left-hand side that we mentioned. If you came across this particular license at the bottom, then you would know it was a Creative Commons license that requires attribution and for the users to share or like should they use the content in any way. So why use OER? There's benefits for both students and faculty. For students, it means reducing the cost of expensive textbooks. Students may pay over $1,000 a year for textbooks. That's about $4,000 by the end of their education. Because textbooks are expensive, students often won't pay or can't pay for the textbooks. This means students may not take a course or take it but jeopardize their success by not obtaining the required materials. Also, with OER, students can gain access to the materials on the first day or earlier if the instructor desires. There's no longer worrying about the right edition or waiting for financial aid vouchers. Instant access on day one. Students can also have permanent access. They can hold on and own this material for as long as they want. Typically with textbooks, they will sell it back to get some money back. If they're using a digital textbook, they often only have access for a limited time, such as one year, after which they can no longer get to the material. Finally, it also makes room for a wider range of materials and formats that may not be available in a traditional textbook. Faculty also benefit from using OER material. OER allows faculty to edit and update the content. Legally, an instructor could not change something that has a copyright, but with CC licensed material, faculty can update as they need. The other side of this is that textbooks are often putting out new editions every other year, even if nothing significant has changed in the field. Therefore, using OER allows faculty to keep the versions that they feel is best rather than leave it up to the publisher. Faculty can also now blend and mix material as they see fit. Maybe a chapter from this book mixed with a few paragraphs from this article and a bit of the instructor's own insight. OER also provides content that the faculty member can use to maximize learning. They can choose three to four different items, such as an article, a podcast, a video, and a simulation to explore a topic and let students decide which format works best for them. OER also opens up new teaching opportunities and strategies such as open pedagogy, where students are co-creating and co-editing the learning materials for themselves and for future learners. So how might you go about using OER? There are several strategies that are useful to consider for approaching this. The first strategy is adopt. In this strategy, you curate content into your lessons based upon what's out there. 
a video here, a podcast there, a slide deck from somewhere else. The second strategy is adapt. Here, you take content that's out there, but you augment it. Maybe you directly add stuff or splice some interesting content together. The third strategy is build. Builders craft the content of their course from their own vision and expertise. Therefore, you might create an entire textbook or podcast series or mini lecture videos for your students to learn from. Where do you find OER? There's so many great places to find them. OpenStax is a good place to find peer-reviewed textbooks for popular courses such as calculus, statistics, biology, physics, sociology, and many more. OER Commons, Merlot, and OER Metafinder are good search engines for learning content such as lessons, slide decks, question banks, etc. Creative Commons, YouTube, and Google all have search engine options that let you filter content that is licensed with OER. And of course, the librarians are always a great help, and there is a library guide to help you out. If you have further questions, please send us an email at ctl at brandeis.edu. Thank you for watching.